Hi there, this is uh, AZ Bill 3433 once again. And uh, this is going to be a boil test of the, the large fence post cap with three carbon felt wicks. I'm, uh, we're going to do a boil test. Here it's uh, in Arizona this morning, it's probably in the high 60s, so it's conducive to doing a test today. I've got the uh, water, two cups of water, at 61 degrees and uh, we're going to light her up. Now you can see what I've done with this uh, I had this wire mesh uh, pot stand and when I put it the, uh, the uh, stove inside the pot stand it was a little bit too close so I've actually intertwined the tent stakes that I've used on one of my other videos and one of my other stoves so that I can get what looks to be maybe the proper height to get that sweet spot. So. Anyway, I already uh, have it all uh, fueled up and get her lit here and uh, get her going. And I've got the garage door open. I'm probably going to close that once I get started. So when we come back, uh, right at the time that we're probably close to boil, we'll be able to see the flames a little bit better. But for now, I'm going to go ahead and put this on. It looks like we're all pretty much going okay there. And let me step over here and and uh, put this on our pot stand which is actually working out pretty good and we'll get to we'll get our time going and uh, let's see if we take a look and see if we look and see how it looks right now it doesn't look too bad I uh, maybe get a little closer up here and see Move the height a little. There we go. That's not bad. Okay, so anyway, I'll wait till we get to about 200 degrees and then we'll start the uh, camera back up again and uh, we'll see what time we're at at that particular time. So, like I said, right now here in Arizona, we're at about 68 degrees out here in the garage and we're heading for 94 today. So. I'll be back in a few minutes when, we, when we're up around 200 degrees. Okay, we're back and we're at uh, 205. I kind of missed that 200 mark. We're at 205, 207, 208, 210. And we can hear it's boiling pretty, pretty robustly right now. Still at 210. 212. 7 minutes and 34 seconds. And uh, I'm liking the looks of that flame. Uh, on the way up, I think, probably because the flame is looking better because of the heat that it's getting off of the. Uh, off of the uh, you know, Musa pot, and uh, we can. I did just a real light refueling at about the five and a half minute mark. Not much. I just saw one of the carbon felts, like you see right now. One of the carbon felts was looking a little bit like it was starting to uh, uh, run out a little fuel, but right now it's running quite nicely. I think uh, not too much as far as yellow flame. So I think that's pretty successful. That. 7 minutes and uh, 34 seconds. And I know from yesterday, because I ran this yesterday, but with a different pot stand, <clears throat> and it, uh, it, it ran quite a long time. In fact, I was trying to gauge how much fuel I've used here, but I think I probably used just a little over about one to one and a half ounces of fuel that actually I put into the stove. So. Um, I guess you'd have to take that in consideration too. But this will last for quite a long time running at, at this rate. Uh, yesterday ran, I think, for almost 12 to 14 minutes, somewhere in that area. I didn't really time it, but it seemed like it took quite a long time for it to run out. So, okay, I'm, uh, I'm gonna let this 
run its course and uh, then we'll be back and we'll discuss you know what I think about this uh, burn test and look at maybe what we're going to do in the future as far as uh, burn test on these particular type of uh, post caps. I've got the smaller one yet I want to do and we'll talk about that when we come back. Okay we're back. Uh, first of all I'm sorry for any road noise you may hear in the background. I've got the garage door back open again to get some air in. Um, I think this is a pretty successful burn test on this particular stove. Um, uh, I, I would suppose you could probably make any configuration up here you wanted to. I thought this was maybe an interesting idea to have the three wicks and it seems to burn fairly well. Um, one thing I would say if you were going to do something like this or duplicate it in some way, just make sure you put the uh, fuel nipple in an area that's open so that the fuel can actually get to all three of the wicks on here. And that, and I like the idea of having it closer to the bottom here. That seems to work really well. Now you can see here I've I've got my pad. This is the pad that I I made here yesterday. And this is remember on my last video I said keep these these bottles. And this is the actually the uh, water bottle that I cut the bottom off and then I cleaned up the uh, burrs and everything on it. And you just take it and like I showed in the last video, you take it over your felt and rotate it around. And in about uh, three or four minutes you got yourself a a nice little pad that you can use to you know put your stoves on so you don't transfer either cold or heat into you know whatever surface you're you're doing your burn on so I think that's worked works pretty well now if you watch I saw a recent video video by digitizer 101 and I appreciate he did me a shout out on on his most recent video and uh, I think he was using this littler uh, fence post cap and uh, I'm going to take the center wick out but this is what he did he put a carbon felt on just the inside perimeter and allowed uh, fuel to go to the center and did a burn test which was good so what I'm going to do is I'm going to do the same thing I'm going to do the a burn test in this configuration and then I'm actually going to do a burn test and see what the difference is if you use it as a center wick that stands up just on the perimeter slightly so what I'll probably do is I'll probably do the end of the burn test when I'm at about 200 degrees on both and we'll look at what the timing is try to get the temperature of the water and the volume of the water at two cups about the same and uh, see how they compare each of those burn tests and I'll do a video, a single video on, on both of those tests like I said we'll do them right at the end when we're just approaching the 212 mark on both of them to see how they compare so that will probably be my next uh, video that I do. So uh, hopefully you've enjoyed this particular video. And if you have any questions or comments, I'd appreciate them. So until then, um, we'll see you then. And have a good day. Okay, this is just a little supplemental I want to do. For those who are lightweight backpackers, this is probably not what they would consider because of its weight and everything else. A gram weenies type stove that... Uh, you know that you see maybe with the elites or some of the other type of stoves that you might see out there that are lightweight but the one thing that big advantage here is that it's the durability of this particular stove so um, what you probably uh, lose or gain in weight for that matter you probably actually um, get back the durability of the stove so I think that's probably you have to kind of weigh those factors uh, you know when you're making those decisions what kind of stove you're going to take with you um, So that's just one thing now You saw the pot stand that I used over there where I actually put the tent stakes on Well, this is a pot stand that I made here Probably about six months ago, and it incorporates a windshield uh, System on here that I put on here. This is actually the body portion of six ounce ocean spray cans that I, I actually made the elite style stoves from these. Now, I may do a burn test with using this type of windshield and see how well it works, but the reason I don't use it is because you can't see the flame pattern um, and when we're doing some of this testing, so I haven't really used this yet, but maybe somewhere down the road uh, we'll do a test using this windscreen and so see how, how well it works. So, thank you for watching, and again, any questions or comments, please let me know. Bye-bye.